Hello guys, Zay right here. A firm requires resources in form of funds raised from investors in order to meet its day-to-day -day activities. Financial management ensures that resources are allocated to projects which will yield the highest returns. By the end of this lesson, you should be in a position to explain finance and financial management, what financial managers do, and stakeholder theories and agency problems. Real quick, do make sure you download a copy of notes that go with this video for we'll make some references to it. Such can be found in our website zeriteventures.com or the link provided in the video description. In order to understand financial management, we first have to understand finance. Finance is the application of economic principles to decision making that involves the allocation of money under conditions of uncertainty. Financial management, therefore, is a discipline concerned with the generation and allocation of scarce resources to the most efficient user within the firm through a market pricing system. A firm requires resources in the form of funds raised from investors and financial management ensures that resources are allocated to projects which will yield the highest return, as you already mentioned earlier. What financial managers do, however, can take quite a number of um, shapes. So there are a number of functions and roles played by finance manager. Most of this you can get from the notes that accompany this video. However, let's look at three main roles that finance managers do play or functions. These are number one, how do we raise money? Number two, investment decisions, that is how do we invest? And number three, how to manage working capital. So let us look at this from a practical point of view. Say we have a company called Olo Limited. So this is a new company and nothing much is happening. The first thing we have to do is raise money. So there are a number of ways in which you can raise money for a business. In this case, our finance manager settles for two sources. That is shareholder, which is also equity finance, and other forms of debts, that is debt finance. In total, we now have 150,000. That is 80,000 in share capital and reserves and 70,000 in non-current liabilities, giving us a total of 150,000. The financial manager must have not only figured out where this money will come from, but also the cost of such capital. So the next thing to worry about is what to do with the money. How do we invest it? In short, investment decisions. The business will have to buy assets, but there has to be proper appraisal before we spend. So the business decides to spend 135 on non-current asset, which is reflected as follows in our statement of financial position. So now, things seem to be moving on well in the Olo Limited, but Still, we have to look at day-to-day -day running of the business, and that brings us to managing management of working capital. In the day-to-day -day operation, the business will need money. The finance manager has to determine how much this will be since it's the working capital. So let us say our current assets are 250000 Now, this means that we must have done some business on credit and also ask for credit, especially since we had, remember, 150,000. That will make our ca our current liabilities to 10,000. So working capital is simply current assets minus current liabilities. Working capital management is a delicate act since if we don't manage it properly, we may end up borrowing more than we need or simply end up under finance in our day-to-day -day activities. Make sure you read more about functions of a manager from the notes provided with the video or simply click the link in the video description. So, having done with uh, all that, let us jump into stakeholders theory. Corporations have evolved from being a legal setup where business transactions are carried out as a means of organizing economic life into a corporate system. This forms the basis of understanding stakeholders theory. Stakeholders theory begins with assumption that values are necessary and ex explicitly 
part of doing business. It also pushes manager to be clear about how they want to do business, specifically what kinds of relationship they want and need to create with their stakeholders to deliver on their purpose. The focus of stakeholder theory is articulated in two core questions that is according to Freeman in 1994. Number one, what is the purpose of the firm? And the second, what responsibilities does management have to stakeholders? Of course, there are challenges posed by this theory and such details can be found in the notes. The last thing we need to look at is agency theory. Within the financial management context, agency exists between shareholders and management, and number two, debt holders and shareholders. The conflict of interest between these parties is referred to as agency problems, and let us examine them. The first one is shareholders versus managers. A limited liability company is owned by shareholders, and in most cases, is managed by a board of directors appointed by shareholders for a number of reasons such as time and skills needed for assistance. In this kind of arrangement, conflict of interest usually occurs between the two parties in the following ways. Number one, managers may not work hard to maximize the shareholders' wealth if they perceive that they will not gain much from hard work. Second, managers may award themselves salaries and other benefits far above what a shareholder may consider as reasonable. Third, managers may maximize leisure time at the expense of working hard. And fourth, managers may undertake projects which shareholders may find unreasonable. And last, managers may undertake projects which improve the corporate image but not in any way profitable, among other problems. Now, how do we solve this? In order to ensure that managers act to the best interest of shareholders, a firm will ensure, number one, compensation plans tie the income of managers to success of the firm. This includes things like direct payment of cash of a fixed amount per period or cash reward such as bonuses based on performance. Number two, threat of firing. And number three, threat of acquisition or takeover. Now, let's look at the second problem, that is debt holders versus shareholders. This problem arises due to the conflict of interest between shareholders and creditors. In business, you are either using your own money or other people's money. Creditors lend funds to the firm at rates that are based on, number one, riskiness of the firm's existing assets. Second, expectations concerning the riskiness of future assets addition. Third, the firm's existing capital structure. And last, expectation concerning future capital structure changes. These are the factors that determine the riskiness of the firm's cash flow and hence the safety of its debt issue. Shareholders, through management, may make decisions which will cause the firm's riskiness to change. This will affect the value of debt. The firm may increase the level of debt to boost profits. This will reduce the value of all debt because it increases the risk of the firm. Creditors will protect themselves against the above through 1. Insisting on restrictive covenants to be incorporated in debt contracts. And 2. If creditors perceive that shareholders are trying to take advantage of them in an ethical way, they may choose not to deal further with the firm or ask for a much higher than norm normal rate of interest to compensate for the risk of such possible exploitations. Now, remember, this is just a summary. Okay, the video is a summary of uh, the entire lesson. So make sure you get the notes and uh, you read. And if you have any questions, of course, you can always contact us via our website, zeretventures.com. Make sure you check out the revision materials and uh, ebooks from the website.